Hello and welcome to the October edition of this month's experiment from the Reuben H. Fleet Science Center in San Diego, California. I'm Nicole Schiffer. And I'm Brandon Elliott. So today, we are going to be making plankton. Like, making plankton. Cool. I know, I know plankton exists in waters and stuff. Right. What, what is a plankton? Well, we're going to get into that for a second. But first, I want to let you know what we're going to need for today's experiment. The list of things that we have right here. You can also find on our website, as always, www.rhfleet.com. Cool. Okay. I'm excited. I know you are. All right. So the first thing you need is a clear aquarium or a clear bucket of water. It's got to be clear so you can kind of see what's going on inside. Okay. Very important. Secondly, you're going to need some stuff. Some of this kind of stuff. We've got modeling clay here. We've got toothpicks, uh, little bits of sponge, um, some some beads, some little balls, that kind of thing, some buttons. We've got some styrofoam peanuts. These are really cool. We have a lot of stuff. Pipe cleaners, just all kinds of things you can get really creative <laughs> Anything with. Anything you can find around the house. Right, yeah. We've Recyclables got, will work great as well with this. Exactly. We've got paper clips. We've got some straws. So a whole lot of things that we can we can put this together with. Great. So, this is exciting. Yeah. So I'm going to re-ask my question since uh, I didn't get it answered. Well. What are plankton? Well, plankton. I know they're asked, in water. Yes, they are in water. That's very astute sad. of you. So plankton are actually these little tiny or organisms that you find in the ocean. Um, they're just all different kinds of little okay. shapes of them and everything like that. They're very, very small though. And they're really important in the ocean food chain. They actually serve as a very important food source for all kinds of animals you find in the ocean from little small creatures all the way up to gigantic blue whales. They eat plankton Whoa, too. Oh, okay. So. Oh, I think I saw a video on that one. Yeah. Very cool. So let's look, look at some pictures of plankton All right. and uh, let's see if we can get some characteristics, shapes, and sizes that we're going to try to replicate. So as you can see, all these different plankton are, they come in different shapes, all different kinds of things, you know. But the thing about them is that they're all heavier. They're all heavier than, yeah, wow. that's nice. They're all heavier than water, okay? So without certain kinds of adaptations, they just sink right down to the bottom, which is not where you want to be if you're a plankton. So they've developed all these kinds of adaptations. So they're kind of in the middle. Exactly. They kind of float at the surface or just right beneath okay. the surface. Okay. okay, That's kind of where the plankton hang out. That's their, that's their neighborhood. <laughs> that's their neighborhood. That's right. So the plankton, they've developed all these different kinds of adaptations to keep them right in that really good little zone. So some of them have little kind of spiky parts to them. They have sort of projections that go out into the water. Some There's of them even have... some flat ones, too. They look really thin. Yeah, yeah. They can have all different kinds. And some of them actually even have a little, little bit of oil inside because, as you know, mm. oil is... Less dense exactly. than water. Exactly. <laughs> so it kind of helps it to, to stay in that little, that little space as well. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. I think I'm more aptly prepared to make my plankton now. Well, I so, so I've, um, let's see, I can choose all these materials or something from the, these materials. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and go with, Yes. I like the foam. Okay. I'm going to take a colorful shape because I my plankton's going to have some flair. All right. I'm going to, oh wait, so it can't be too heavy. All right, this should float, I would think, and this should float. Okay. You can even test these objects out individually, right? Sure, Is absolutely. that okay? Is this sure. Yours? Okay. Go ahead. So my foam piece in there. That will float. That's floating. Cool. So I'm definitely going to use that. Okay. And, oh nice, that floats too. This is the styrofoam packing peanut, right? Right, exactly. And so since we don't want them right at the surface, we want it to kind of sink a little bit, right? Right, exactly. I mean, if the plankton so, are right at the surface, they're just going to get too hot. That's not really like where, where they like to be. They okay. can't deal with all the heat up there. So <laughs> okay. So be right underneath the surface. I'm going to take my toothpick and attach these together. And you may need some parental supervision with this. Be so thanks for watching out. Well. <laughs> That's what I do. All right, and uh, you know I don't think this is heavy enough to actually sink or go right below the surface. So, surface. So I'm going to add a paper clip for some weight here. Change its, oops, density. And all right, I think that looks pretty good, right? It's a very, very lovely plank. <laughs> I like it. All right, I'll drop it in. All right. Well, it's kind of floating, it's still floating. Half underneath the surface, half at the surface, so, you know. But that's going to get too hot and not make it, right? Exactly. So I need right. to add some more weight to it. So this is a really good way to experience the scientific method, right? Trial and error. So I can see that this is still floating. So I'm going to add some more weight to it to see if it'll sink. Just try a little bit of this modeling clay. I was playing with this earlier. Oh, it's nice. really, really dense. Even just a little bit of it kind of helps suggestion. out. So let's, Absolutely. let's try and get a little bit of that on there. Sweet. Let's see what happens. All right. So we have our new plankton. All right. And it's, you are, you know what, you have a career Float. in boat making, I think. <laughs> we're not making boats today, though. We're making no, plankton. Right, okay, well, put a whole lot more Let's in just there. put the rest of this model in clay on here. All right, you ready? Go for let's it. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, all right. Oh, man, okay. <laughs> so it kind of came apart there, but if we get rid of this, you can kind of see. 
I can tell we can just do this for a while and keep making different styles of plankton and keep experimenting. Absolutely. But can you tell us a little bit more about it? Or? Right, exactly. Well, let me tell you first why it's important that they stay at the surface or near the surface okay, as opposed to going all the way down. Kind of like that. That's going all the way down. <laughs> So basically, there are different kinds of plankton. There's one kind called actually phytoplankton. Phytoplankton. Right, exactly. And what phytoplankton do, they do a little little kind of same thing as plants. With the pH. They, but that's right. Absolutely. They, all right. Okay. So they do a similar, they go through a similar process of making food similar to plants. They actually okay. experience photosynthesis, nice. also with the pH. And nice. so doing photosynthesis, do you remember how photosynthesis works in plants? I'm going to need you to really recap this for me. <laughs> All right, so photosynthesis and works. And our viewers at home. Absolutely. <laughs> photosynthesis works by converting the energy from the sun basically into a food product that the organism can eat, digest, okay, and, okay. and remain healthy with. Sunlight okay? goes in. Exactly. Sunlight goes in. So they want to be at the surface so they can get enough sunlight. If they go down too far, they're not going to be able to do that whole process okay. of, of it's photosynthesis. It's going to be too dark. Exactly. Nice. That's right. So that's why they want to stay about here. If they're down at the bottom, like our little one right there, <laughs> not so good. Cool. Now we do have another kind of plankton called zooplankton, wow. or zooplankton, however you want to say it. Okay. The zooplankton, they actually eat the phytoplankton. Oh, hey. Okay. So there's a whole little food I'm chain. I'm going to make a zooplankton then. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. So there's a whole food chain within the plankton family. Okay. And you want to keep that going, so you really... You really want to make sure that, that all of the plankton are, are able to stay near the surface Great. of the water. Now, the thing about the surface of the water, water temperature, all of that, is we've got, you may have heard, problem with global warming going on. I've heard of and that. And the thing about that is that it's actually increasing the surface of the water, the water temperature. Okay. Now, if it gets really warm... So the water temperature at the surface of the oceans higher. Exactly. Or higher as, as a result of this climate change. Right, exactly. Okay. So plankton, in order to thrive, the thing that they eat, if, they, if, they're, if you're a plankton that can't... This is one you made, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's try this one. So if you're a plankton... Maybe we can time it, too. All right. You want to time it? Yeah. Go ahead. Good. Well, look at that. That's kind of perfect, if I do say so. Oh, okay. Myself. So you have a big portion of it under the water. Right. A lot of it's under the water. No you need to time. But if it does start to sink, yeah. you can start timing it and see um, what you want it to do is sink very slowly, right? Right. Exactly. And so what you want to do is you just want to keep experimenting with it, see what materials make it more dense, less dense. Remember, density makes it sink to the bottom, that kind of and thing. And you just kind so of keep playing with it. what's the relation, again, with climate change? Right. So the, okay. The surface of the water is heating up. Exactly. So if you're not a phytoplankton, you can't get your food directly from the sun. Right. So many you, of they're going to they're going to die. They're going right. to not exist anymore. Well, what happens is the plankton that can't go through photosynthesis, they actually depend on the nutrients that come from the bottom of the ocean. You've got two basically layers of water. One layer of water at the top, one layer of the water at the bottom. They're different temperatures. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, so often, uh, the layer on the bottom mixes with the water on the top. That layer of water on the bottom has a lot of nutrients in it, like iron and other kinds of good stuff that plankton really like. But if the water at the top gets too hot because of global warming, the sea water getting hotter, all of that, that mixing isn't going to happen anymore. Okay. So there's going to be no nutrients down in that really nice neighborhood where the plankton like to hang out and eat. No, no iron, no nutrients, nothing for them to eat. Okay. So the plankton die off, and oh. if the plankton die off, what happens to the animals that eat the plankton? Well, That's they've got That's a really nothing. bad consequence. Exactly. They've got nothing to eat as well. So it's really important for us to take certain steps to try and make sure that we kind of curb all of this global warming, water temperature rising stuff going on. Absolutely. Very bad. There are huge consequences that go all the way up the food chain. That can be really severe if all of the animals in the ocean no longer exist. Exactly. Existed, right? Like we talked about the blue whale. What's the blue whale going to eat if we don't have that? So, exactly. Wow. You know, so, okay. you know, but anyway. Well, thanks so much. That was an excellent explanation. Very well, extensive. I truly appreciate it. I think sure. I've learned a lot from well, I'm this. I'm just going to go ahead and make another perfect plan. Uh oh, now. going for it. All right. Okay, he used a sponge, a toothpick, and some clay. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and what else? I'm going to put else? a button just because. <laughs> All right. There it is. It's a little sort of SpongeBobby looking plankton right there. It goes right in. Kind of floats a little bit. Oh, it's yeah. still floating. Floating, floating, floating. Yeah. So I think we can definitely use to experiment a little bit more. Right. So anyway, thank you so much for that explanation. Thank you, viewers at home, for watching. And do remember. Do, Do try, try this at home. home.